day two of the detention of our patriotic front secretary general, Honorable Rafael Nakachinda. You are aware that he was arrested yesterday at Woodlands Police Station, given a charge of sedition over remarks he made over the poisoned millimeter that was being distributed to our people, which caused the death of over 400 dogs. And to death, we don't know the number of people who could have died. And they said unto Moses, speak thou with us and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. So the police charged him with sedition over that matter. Uh, the police have been unable to grant Honorable Bonaka Chinda uh, bond contrary to the numerous statements by President Nakainde Ichilema, who always says if someone is um, arrested, they should be uh, arraigned and given bond or taken to court quickly. Today it's been over 24 hours. We are in the second day, and Honorable Bonaka Chinda still doesn't have police bond. We have organized sureties, two members of parliament, and two councillors, and Honorable Bonaka Chinda still doesn't have um, a police bond. I'm here with members of the Patriotic Front, led by senior members of Honorable Mutoto Kafuaya, MP for Lunte, who's a member of the Central Committee, of Honorable Madam Sylvia Chalikosa, member of the Central Committee, former minister, and of Professor Nkanduluo, who's also here. We will start with our Honorable Professor Nkanduluo, your views, especially in light of the United Nations uh, Commission on Human Rights Council's report of uh, these arrests and harassment of the opposition. So thank you very much, Ambassador uh, Mwamba. For me, basically, as a, a woman in this country, all oh, what is happening in this country gives very, very sad reading. And uh, sometimes I sit and wonder and say, what is happening to our country? Why would we be going through a process of revenge against each other? What are we building as a future of this country? What is, are we going to leave as a legacy for our children and our children's children? And uh, I, I, I feel very, very sad. You can even see my demeanor. I'm extremely sad. But I think what is even more, as a health provider, when you look at, under, of the conditions that are prevailing, you just feel so sad that uh, you can have somebody where the law provides that uh, once somebody has shortages, they should be released and they should be subjected to conditions that are very detrimental to their health. So I can tell you that I, I am extremely sad. Sometimes I even have no words uh, to say because of the kind of uh, feeling that I have at this particular moment. In fact, this morning when I woke up, I had decided that maybe I shouldn't even come to visit. But being a human being, you feel, no, let me go and check on my colleague because it's so sad. And one doesn't want to just break down, it's sad. When we visited Honorable Chitotela and Honorable Chilangwa, we actually had to break down and cry. And one is asking, is this what it means to be a leader? That once you leave, leave office, then you become incarcerated, you become an enemy of the country. I think Zambia should reflect on this and uh, hopefully those who will come into future leadership of this country need to reflect on what's going on in this country and we must find a way of stopping it. So for me, I'm calling on all of us to reflect on the goings on that have been going on in this country for the past three years. Reflect and think about our children, our children's children. This is not the future Zambia wants. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Mutoto Kafaya. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba. Uh, and I think to begin with, I would like to adopt the views that have been tendered by uh, Honorable Professor Nkanduluo. Uh, I'm touched by her words, uh, but much more, I'm touched by what is happening in our country. Uh, I think that um, this country deserves better, 
the Zambian people uh, deserve a leadership that is able to solve the problems that we, uh, they are contending with. Uh, the Zambian people continue asking the same questions. Who can solve our problems? Who can reduce the cost of living? Who can eliminate load shedding? Who can help us to live dignified lives? But what we see is that uh, leadership just comes to destroy the Zambian people, just comes to hammer the already hammered Zambian people. Uh, and it's very unfortunate. Right now, the uh, Zambia police is having to spend money to keep uh, Honorable Nakachinda for a, an offense, uh, an alleged offense that actually uh, the Zambian government is refusing uh, to be using against the opposition. Uh, the other day I read a, a report from, uh, from one UN agency uh, who claimed that the Zambian, uh, Zambia police or the Zambian government through the Zambia police is actually intimidating the opposition by the use of several offenses, including seditious practices. Uh, and I did hear from one, um, uh, one agent uh, of government refusing that actually the content of that report is untrue. But today, Honorable Nakachinda is there for the very offense that is contained in that report. So what are you refusing then as a government? Why are you denying that you aren't using uh, this particular uh, offense when in fact a day after your, your rebuttal you go on and arrest the uh, Secretary General of the largest opposition political party? I think that uh, it's very, very unfortunate. But while you do this, I want you to remember, and by you I mean the Zambian government, that the Zambian people are suffering. And the Zambian people will not forget their suffering. Uh, in 2026 and you are going to pay for all of these things that you are actually uh, causing on the Zambian people instead of focusing on things that uh, can help them you are focusing on arresting Nakachinda, arresting this one, arresting this and that uh, it's very very unfortunate I hope that uh, you can uh, you, you can change your trajectory thank you so much thank you Honorable Charlie Professor We've been joined by a leader of the opposition in Parliament, Honorable Grand Mundurile, but you speak up to Madam Charlie Kosi. Um, I came earlier uh, to visit Honorable Nakatunda, and um, we were allowed to see him during lunch hour from 13 to 14 hours, and then we were told to leave afterwards and come back 16 hours. So this is the second time I'm coming to see Honorable Nakatunda, and what has disturbed me is that um, the current government, uh, through the presidency of um, Haga in the Hichilema, used to condemn the very, very things that they are practicing now. And it's so hypocritical of this current government to even appear like they are addressing the issues that are affecting the Zambian people, when in fact their concentration is just on persecution of opposition members going beyond opposition members, the clergy, um, journalists, ordinary citizens, anybody who voices out um, against what the government is not doing, which it should be doing, which is addressing the high cost of living, amongst other issues. So I find it very, very disturbing that um, the number one agenda that this president, HH, has is to just annihilate the opposition. What do you gain? If the concentration was to be on development, I think a lot more Zambians would be much, much happier. But as it is, all we are seeing is just persecution, persecution, and uh, you know, the same people being the judge and the jury, and uh, effecting arrests, possibly convictions as well. So when I was a young girl, I used to dream about becoming a member of parliament. I became a member of parliament, and my experience has been that once you leave office, you have nothing to show for the goods that you did, except to be persecuted. Whatever is happening to our colleagues can happen to anybody. So anybody who is thinking of joining politics has to think twice, because the current leadership is showing to all Zambians that being a public leader comes with its consequences. It should not be like that. While a lot of Zambians may be celebrating, saying that we, we are getting what we deserve, which is not true, they have to think about, if it's not us today, it will be somebody else tomorrow. 
So as a country, we need to be above um, personal issues and look at the country. We've lost credibility in the region, we've lost credibility on the continent, and we've lost credibility internationally as a country because of the misdeeds of the current government. How are we going to correct that? All Zambians must look at this issue as something that affects each and every one of us. It's not just members of PF, members of other political parties, it's all Zambians. So we can only appeal to everybody to take an interest in civic um, activities and speak, you know. It's not always going to be the politicians alone that will speak against such injustice. We all need to be above this because unless we all get involved, this thing will not stop. It will go to the next level and before you know it, even those who are not affected will become affected. It's a very, very sad state of affairs. I hope that something will be done to put a stop to all this. Thank you very much. Leader of the Opposition, one of the Grand Mundi. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Communication. You see, Chair, I'm in the habit of uh, <coughs> taking notes of my daily activities. So before I came, I went to my diary and I discovered that um, uh, we've had uh, visitations to the police station uh, over 50 times the past few years. That's the number of times our people have been in Kassarov. And uh, we may be quoting from uh, the U.S. Ambassador's words where he said that uh, if you want to see uh, your leader's priorities, see where they put much of their efforts. So the UPND government clearly and much of the effort has gone towards uh, intimidation and persecution of um, a, a, you know, opposition political leaders, as it were. Um, <clears throat> if you look at what is happening today, the headlines in newspapers are not graced with developmental programs, programs that will benefit the citizens. If you open a newspaper, it's Mwamba arrested, Nakachinda detained, Chilangwa convicted. That's all that you've seen the past few years. Now, if you compare what is happening now with what happened in the past, in the past was totally different. There's a groundbreaking ceremony. President Lungu is uh, uh, commissioning the bottom road, the Chingola Sorezi Road, or Kazungula Bridge, or he's commissioning works at Pusaka International Airport, or Livingston Airport, or there's a water dam, Kafala Futa Dam. That is what graced our headlines. Now, when you look at the two, you clear, you realize that um, the PF and President Lungu prioritized developmental programs. That is why that was what was gracing our headlines in the past. But today, the priority of President Daka in the Ichilema is to intimidate opposing political leaders. And the reason is simple. Uh, the UPND government, uh, UPND leaders had no plan for this country. They never thought about governing this country. So what their plan now is, is to oppress and suppress the opposing voice so that there's nothing else for people to compare with, as it were. But Zambians are not stupid. Zambians can compare the three years in, uh, uh, of the EPND in government and the three years of the PF in government, as it were. Uh, you find that the very offenses for which they are picking our people today are the same offenses for which they are compensating their, their people. Exactly. Then you would wonder, because mm -hmm. a, if this had happened to a UPND cadre previously, a UPND member, mm -hmm. today they are being paid millions of kwacha mm -hmm. uh, for having been detained under these circumstances. Whilst on the other hand, they are doing the same to our, 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 our members as it were. Uh, I'm very happy, Chairman, uh, communication that uh, we've been vindicated by the UN report. Uh, the UN report vindicates us because when we spoke previously about the intimidation, uh, the constraints on the uh, democratic space in the country, people thought it was mere politicking. But these are experts that have got presence in Zambia. They are not only doing desk uh, reports as it were. They've actually got people on the ground that have been there to verify. So as it is now, as a country, we are an embarrassment to the inter international community. Whilst we are going through so many problems, ranging from um, load shading, um, uh, uh, you know, poisoned millimeal, poisoned maize, lack of food, as it were. All that people can read about Zambia is uh, the oppression and the persecution of our uh, political leader. Our call uh, to the president is that uh, 
he must sit for a moment and just reflect. How can he put on a lens of an ordinary Zambia to try and understand how he's viewed as a leader, how his government is viewed? The PF government that he condemned so much actually performed a thousand times better, as it were. Because whilst he spoke and condemned everything that they did, the people on the ground were able to appreciate. Because President uh, 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 Edgar Chagwalung ensured that when we had drought in 2015, he realized that the small businesses like barber shops, saloons, uh, workshops and so on were going to suffer. He went out of the way and ensured that he imported power. And he imported power expensively. That is to the, ex the extent to which he could go to save the lives of the Zambian people. Running a country is not like running a business where you have to post profit. You become so sensitive to the margins, the costs, and uh, you know, the, the, the benefit as it were. A governance uh, would speak to what we call social profits. The social profit is to be able to save lives in hospitals by supplying them with power. What does it pay a country to try and save uh, money, uh, fail to import power because you feel power is expensive? And yet people are dying in hospitals. We've got reports of people who are dying on hospital beds, not because they're supposed to die, but because there's no power. What will it pay a country for all the orders in all these markets, including challenger markets, closing up shop? They have no jobs. They were encouraged to start small economic activities. Now they can't trade because there's no power. I was doing my calculations. Uh, three hours of power per day translates to only three days of power in 30 days. Mm. So that's how, I mean, what responsible government can honestly do that? You do that, there's no announcement whatsoever. There's no position taken uh, from the head of state himself to try and see how to save this country. And yet, they expect Zedare to go out there and collect taxes. Taxes from where? The businesses are closing every, you know, every other, every other day. Yeah, so it's very unfortunate that our youths have been abandoned. These are the same youths that President Aka Indichilema promised. He said, just shout Bali, Chijob Muli. He later changed and said, no, you are lazy, start your small businesses. The young people went out of their way. They went and accessed loans and got some grants and started a business. But that business can't run today. Uh, you know, uh, I will take advantage of that to immediately call upon the president that uh, all the youths that got loans or got loans through CDF must be forgiven. Those debts must be forgiven. Mm. It will be unfair for the president or the government to expect the youths to repay these loans, yet their businesses have been killed. So my call uh, to the UPND government is that all those youths who access loans through CDF between 2021 uh, to date should have their loans uh, cancelled. It will not make sense to expect these youths to pay uh, these loans as it were. They are the same loans that they had used to buy equipment, equipment which is not uh, working today. Some of them, because of surges, they've actually lost their equipment as it were. So it's indeed very, very unfortunate that um, Comrade Nakachinda has to go through uh, this uh, time and again. Uh, Comrade Mwamba is facing similar uh, you know, charges as it were. He's a, we is fortunate that he's still out here to speak to the public as it was. So President Daka in the what the Zambian people want is not to see us taking interviews at police stations. We should be taking these interviews in front of the road that is about to be commissioned. We should be taking these interviews because some airport is about to be done. Some hospitals are about to be built, as it were. Some dams are being created. We haven't heard anything about the UPND policies to do with um, uh, the revised policies in agriculture. They came in with what they call the Comprehensive Agriculture uh, Support Program, CASIP. The Minister of Agriculture doesn't even understand what that is. We asked him in Parliament, can you explain how different this CASIP is from what um, we, we've been doing? So, uh, what we expect uh, to hear from the UPND government going forward? Can we know what plans they have in the agriculture sector? Can we know what plans they have uh, in the energy sector? Can we know what they have in, to do with infrastructure uh, projects as it were? Otherwise, it's unfortunate, but I'm very, very happy, uh, Chairman uh, Communication, that the UN report indicates us 
what we've been talking about is what is captured in that particular report upon their expert findings as it were. So it's really sad that we're going through this as that. You can rush to see our brothers and give us. Thank you. Before they exclude you. And then, yeah, yeah, please. In fact, I was going to even ask, you know, how can a utility company, a parastatal like Zesco, be advising people to invest in alternative energy? when it's their core function to provide energy and provide power to the country. They, the Gambian government should be interested in investing in this so that they look at the alternative energy and provide that an, at an affordable um, cost to the members of you know, the Zambian people. So it, it is most unfortunate. We are dealing with three, four days, sometimes five days of no power. How can anyone survive? You know, your fridges don't work, your freezers don't work, your food gets rotten. It, it's a very, very bad and very embarrassing situation. So the government must think of proper investment into the energy sector. Thank you very much. Uh, just speaking briefly to the UN report. The UN report, especially under the Human Rights uh, Council, the, those special rapporteurs, the special rapporteurs were created for issues like this, where they are rapid, where human rights abuses and human rights, human life is at stake. Last month there was a report about Rwanda condemning President Kagame and his role in the war in the DRC. That is the purpose of those special rapporteurs. You've seen the recent reports about Sudan, wherever human rights are threatened. There's even been special reports against Russia over Ukraine. For Zambia to be listed amongst, to have a special report out of 193 countries, for the month of September, it was Zambia that has been cited. It's really a sad day for ourselves as a country. They received a report they have. They had no choice. We need to remind Zambians that the Zambia comes multi-party state when he attacked through, you know, a proxy, the patriotic front. So it is our local institution that raised that issue. Laws followed. Twelve NGOs, led by NGO CC and Chapter One Foundation, also raised similar concerns. Then the church, Christian Council of Zambia and the Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia, oh, oh, talked about the harassment of the opposition, the issues of torture, and the abandoning of the issues of development to focus on destroying the opposition. They've all spoken about it. The UN is just like cream on, on this issue. They've just affirmed what the local entities have said. So when government denies uh, the UN report, where were they when the church raised these matters? Where were they when Lars raised these matters? Where were they when the 12 NGOs raised these matters? Government must simply own up and promise remedy because this has damaged us. Like Ambassador said, you know, Ambassador Sylvia Chalikosa, although she was a minister, she was also an ambassador. So she knows what she's talking about. Today we are afraid to be at static meetings. Yes. Now you have reports from the UN against us. <laughs> See how far we have sunk as a country. Were these the international aspirations of Dr. Kaunda? No, not at all. You cannot celebrate Zambia's 60th independence anniversary, a damn on jubilee, under this cloud of oppression, of harassment, and of hunger. 6.8 million people face hunger in this country. And you have power being supplied by Zesco three days in a month because they've said they'll be supplying only three hours a day. So if you calculate the three hours by 30, it's just giving you three days in a month. You can't not have a country like this. In fact, probably the president should have even considered, reconsidered his trip to China for the FOCAC meeting, owing to the various crises that the country is facing. This government would not have pushed the arrest of Nakachinda with a UN report hanging over their head. But as if to affirm, the details oh of the God. report, they proceeded to arrest uh, Honorable Rafael Nakachinda.
So Zambians, as who keep on giving you updates, it's the second day of Nakachinda's detention going into the third day because looking at the time, they will clearly not give him yeah. bond and they will not release him today. And he have confirmed his words, which he spake against us. Remember to create an opportunity for yourself not to miss anything by subscribing and hitting the notification bell. And against our judges that judged us by bringing